on a Google site. So I'm going to try and help you think about your thinking a little bit as you're doing this too. So before we even get started here, this website that I've made for you that has all the links and the resources to what we're doing is a Google site. So on the Google site, you could see here that I embedded a Google form. So it's just one of those things to show you what I'm doing. And on this Google form, when you filled out all of that information, usually you're probably used to going to a link to a Google form, but you can embed it right into the Google, for, Google site itself. And then as um, if you haven't created a Google form before, when you fill out a Google form and have pe when people fill it out, it, it automatically populates into a spreadsheet. So as you could see, I had this up in front of the classes as you were filling it out. I could sort of touch base with what were some of the ideas that you thought you were hoping to get out of today's session. And I had a chance to review some of the things that people are already doing in their classroom um, using Google Apps. So it's a really good way to get some instant feedback from your students right away as to where you want to go with what you're going to be doing in class today. I also asked you sort of a scale question as to where are you as far as your, um, you know, your knowledge and application of this topic. And one of the, the uses of the Google form is the fact that I can go and I can show a summary of the responses. So if I asked a question like a scale question or a one to, you know, a multiple choice, I now get a quick overview of where people are at with their knowledge of Google Sites. So it helps me to you know, change the training based on the needs of the people that are in here. So the number five, I hope that I'm going to learn something from you today. And the number ones, you're going to be leaning a little bit, maybe on your neighbors a little bit as we're going through this. And I also know to say that over 20 of you in here, this is your first kind of introduction to Google Sites. And so I can also just tell you to be assured that you are not going to remember everything that you learned today, and that's okay. <laughs> so that you're not going to have to come through this hour and a half session and just walk away thinking that you're going to have to know everything. But I do want to scale the training so that people, you know, have a, have a clear idea of um, that everybody gets something out of this training. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about that um, so you can think about your thinking there. Now what we're going to do to get started with Google Sites is we, I'm going to just do a little overview of it, but as I'm doing an overview or before, what we need to do is you need to get into your Google account. How many of you have signed into your Google account? Excellent. Some people have not. Now here I put on this page a link to the part on your Chaska site that is the sign-in page. You need to remember that it is not just your email address because this is your Google Apps account. And so when you sign in with your username, it's at isd112.org. So let's see if you can get in signed in because most of the time now you're going to be able to participate within your Google Apps account. And I will be the one that's mostly on this resources site showing you what we're going to need to do. So if you get there, it looks like it defaults to Google Drive, which is fantastic. And there's a picture of a yellow computer on there, unless you've been there before. <coughs> so I'm seeing, I'm seeing it working most of the, for most of the people over here, which is fantastic. Are you guys back in? Is it working now? Good. Okay. I actually love standing in the back here so that I can see what's going on with all of your computers. It's fantastic. Okay, so but as you guys are sort of navigating, finding out the rest of that, um, I'm going to just sort of walk you through a little overview of Google Sites. And then we'll get started because there's most of this session I want it to be hands-on. So Google Sites is Google's app that allows you to make websites. And so when you're thinking about websites, we want to think about what are the different applications and uses of some of, of making websites, because that's not something that you and I probably ever had when we were growing up, was the ability to make a website um, as part of a project. And when you were probably going to school, your teacher probably did not have a web page either. And so when we're thinking in education, those are two areas that we can start thinking about how we can use Google Sites. The fact that us as a teacher, should have some sort of web presence because when kids find out who they're going to have for their teacher the next year, that's probably one of the first things that they do is go onto the website to learn a little bit about what's going on. 
The other thing is that when students are, having, are making projects, we no longer just have to think about the pencil and paper as the way that students can do projects. And so we can use the web and real life applications of it in order for student projects and learning too. So when we think about Google Sites, I'm just going to walk through some superpowers and then examples. It is web design and hosting. So when you are, um, Google Sites is, is meant to, for you to create things to go online, to be on the web. So a great place to share. It's also meant to be collaborative. So you do not have to just work alone, but you can work with people. So you can share a Google Site with as many people as you want to that can work on it together. And then, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner over here, there's a lot of um, cool tools within that collaboration and the fact that you can see the revision history of who made which changes when and what they made. And if somebody came in and messed everything up, you can revert back to the, the, the session or the, you know, the Google site before it was what you would maybe consider mixed up. What I love about Google Sites is I feel like it's kind of the one place that all things Google talk. So when you start using Google Docs, and if you start using Google Forms, and Picasso web albums, and Google Drawings, and Google Maps, all of those things talk to Google Sites very well. And I'll show you how you do that. You just, there's a, a couple clicks, and it looks through all of your other Google Apps in order to find the things that you want to put into your Google Site. I kind of consider it the one-stop shop. When you're using all your Google stuff, it all kind of comes together into one place. When you're designing a website, there is a very, very easy entry level within Google Sites. So I have created Google Sites with second graders for an e-portfolio. So there's a very, very easy entry level. But I could show you a few things when you start thinking about the design of Google Sites and you start really caring about the colors and whether they match different pictures that are on there. There's a lot of customization that you can do within your Google Site. If you start knowing a little bit about code, you can start really getting into um, customizing. So it's, it's definitely a process that you can go through um, with the design of your Google Sites. There are options for organization and navigation too. So um, on most of my Edina teachers, every single one of our Edina teachers has a Google Site as their classroom web page. And their navigation looks like this on the left hand side. They've just got a couple quick links that they can go to. But sometimes you start running out of space and you need a little bit more, you need a few more links on there. So you can make the drop down menus as well. If you start having a lot of links in it, it, it looks a little crowded on your page. Google Sites is a good place for storage, too. So you could store um, songs, movies, PowerPoint <coughs> files, PDFs, any kind of file that somebody else, you would need to get to somebody else. It's a place that you can um, store different files as well. We have a school board dashboard that all of our school board documents get loaded up to, um, even though they're not Google Docs, they're in PDF format, and they go on to um, a dashboard website for anybody to access anytime, anywhere as well. Google Sites have these things called gadgets. So gadgets and widgets are sort of these smart boxes that are on websites. And so an example might be the um, dictionary, the Merriam-Webster's word of the day. If you put that little gadget on the front of your website, Every day that you or your students logged in, there would be a new word there. So it's not something that you're going in to change, but you're saying, hey, from the dictionary word of the day, bring that to my website and display it. There are ones for like the weather. Some of them are um, like there's these virtual, this virtual fish tank that you can put on there, which we always put like right below the math facts practice link that the kids have to do. So they go feed the fish and then they play math facts or something. But a couple of the other gadgets that you can do are like iframe, and iframe is if you think of picture in picture when we had that on TV, that you can watch two channels at once, you could put a website on a website. So for example, in Edina schools, we have a, we have a portal that the parents need to go to. And so on the teacher's web page, we bring the login portal to the teacher's website. So it's saving people a click, which is kind of nice. Um, the one thing that I would, would I, that I would say about the, the Google gadgets is that um, we don't use them very much anymore, especially the smart boxes like the, the dictionary word of the day. We um, in Edina put the weather gadget on every single teacher's website so that they could check before they went to school and a lot of kindergarten first and second graders track the weather and all those sorts of things. Well on Halloween one year that gadget was hacked and there was a sort of 
gory like uh, cartoon that came through so we had to take those off about five in the morning so anyways just that's a note a note to self so what are some of the ways that we use Google Sites or that you could start thinking about using Google Sites first of all do you have a web presence are you contributing to the world so do you have a classroom website that you are using because you should and you should have a place that you're updating and that you're showcasing students work um, and that could start out as just like contact information and a little bit about yourself and that's a web presence and then each you know month or e you know each quarter you could have a place that you um, are updating it some of my Dyna teachers the only thing they do is they update their newsletters but it's an updated web presence something that's continually giving new information to the families that are accessing it um, so thinking about that, I don't know what you guys use for websites right now. Edline. Edline? Okay. Edline, that's right. So, but Edline, and then do you have a different learning management system? Do you have Moodle or? We Moodle? have Moodle. Okay. And then we have a portal for So we'll talk a little bit about the difference between Moodle and Google Sites, too, because we use both of them, the Edline as well. Um, Google Sites for student projects really gives the kids the ability to have a bigger audience. And one of the questions that um, I was just talking to somebody who works at Google and they just got a new job there and they said uh, one of the interview questions that they had was tell me about the last three internationally collaborative projects you've been a part of. And as a teacher we go, oh, okay, let's see. Well, at, with Google Sites, you're at least giving more of an audience other than just the teacher and the student. So this is an example of a service learning project that um, our students in Edina did. So every ninth grader part of their government class, they do a service learning project. And they do it throughout the year. So they pick a, a service learning project, they volunteer, they write a blog post, they, you know, they keep a calendar. And one of their final projects is to create a Google site about their experience. So here's the introduction to the project, the purpose, the reaction. They've got a biography of each of the participants, some of their research, the calendar of when they volunteered, a little bit of blogging, and then some web interview videos that they did on some of the people um, that were you know, part of the service learning project as well. So this audience, this gives the, the audience to be on the web, which is fantastic. And what happened is the kids were presenting this um, during the final days, and the teacher had linked them all to their classroom website. It happened to be the day that the school board was touring, as well as the mayor. And he was like, this is fantastic. This is the work that the Edina kids have been doing in the Edina community. We should showcase this. And so with two clicks, we were able to not just have the audience even just be our school, but now the entire city was privy to a lot of the learning that they had had, which just wouldn't happen if it was a journal, paper, or, you know, even something that was just typed. So thinking about the, um, you know, the audience that Google Sites gives you is, is really... Um, fun too. A lot of people are using Google Sites for ePortfolios. So when you think about the students and the work that they're contributing to the web, we could showcase it all in one place. And I'll show you an example of a, um, one of our fourth graders' um, ePortfolios. We are working as a middle school right now. Um, we have 6-9 and the 6th grade teachers are all working together in order to put together a Google Site template that the kids will use in 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade. So that when they go out of ninth grade, they've got an e-portfolio of all the work that they've been doing throughout um, middle school, which is fun. So that takes some collaboration around the teachers and making sure that you know everybody's template looks the same and that you're really working towards what work you're going to publish on that e-portfolio. Um, and then this is one of my favorite projects. So when we talk about relevance, we really try to talk about the learning that the kids are doing, and we want to make it relevant. And so all of our fourth graders... Um, do a state research project and in that state research project they used to make a trifold brochure and when we made a trifold brochure we hung it in the wall and it was that one thing we printed out in color and it was fantastic it looked great but we kind of thought about when the last time we asked for a paper brochure on a place you were going to go visit was and it had been a long time and so we said what do you do you go online and you look about you look online for you know when you want to learn about something or somewhere that you're going to visit so now each of the fourth graders make a website and so this is really fun because it actually is every single fourth grade student gets this experience in Edina um, is that they make a website now for their state as opposed to um, just a paper brochure. So here are all the same paragraphs that they had to write. So here's the New York agriculture and the business and industry and the climate. But one of the things that they couldn't do before was they were able to use Google Maps 
in order to make a customized map for their specific state. So this is Caroline's you know, website about New York, and Caroline made these little place marks on the Google map. So when I click on them, she's the one who put this picture in here and wrote these words about how you could visit Adirondack State Park. And then if you click on this one right here, she's the one who put in this picture of Albany. And so the students were able to make something that looks very, very relevant and very real as to something that you might interact with when you're, on, um, when you're online. The other thing that they did on the Google Sites, which was fun, is you know how you just filled out that Google form that was giving me a little background information about what you know about Google Sites? Um, down here, each of the students created their own Google form as a quiz for when you're finished reading their website, here are some quiz questions that you should be able to answer. And then the students got all the responses of all the people. And so the last day of the, um, the lab, or the, the project, they went in and answered each other's questions. Yes, question. How long, how long does it take for a student who's never made their own website to sit down at the computer and learn the tools to actually create it? You know, content aside, but actually that that's really a good question too because what we do is we let them do a lot of the research and write their we write, have them write all their paragraphs on Google Docs and then once all the writing is complete we take one 45 minute session to come in and make the skeleton so they just make the links on the side and um, they play with the navigation and then really from there it's just edit copy paste and then they're able to go in and do that the Google Maps project is probably another one 45 minute session with a follow-up for some kids that you know, don't really know how to do the pictures and things like that. So really to build the skeleton, we're going to do it today. So you'll get that experience as a student as to what that might look like. Um, but it's probably about one extra lab time with some follow-up for some students that might, you know, have a little bit of a harder time. And that's for fourth graders. So um, that's that, how long it, we, we usually take for this particular project. Good question. Thanks. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to have some hands-on experience with this. Now, I'm going to pop into my Google Apps for Education account as well, which if you, um, with Google Apps for your school district, everybody's looks a little bit different. And so um, it looks like ours is pretty similar, though, with all the stuff that we have turned on. So we have Moodle Google integration. So in Edina, we sign into our Moodle page. And when I sign in, you'll see over here on the right-hand side, we have all of our integration with our Google tools. So this is where the students and the teachers find all of their Moodle courses. And then these we consider the tools that we use for learning. So it is sort of hard to think about the, like when you have Edline, Moodle, and Google Sites, like where's the, where's the commonality? Um, and I'll bring up a little um, Venn diagram that I've made on this. But... If what well, the way that we think about it, and we don't have Edline anymore, we have School View, which is like our uh, gradebook system. So when we think about Moodle, Moodle is the place that I deliver my content. Okay, it's the place that I put all the links to coursework. And the ways that we think about it is that Moodle is my classroom. And when Moodle is my classroom, parents are not always part of my classroom on a daily basis. Right? So that's the stuff that I put in Moodle. But when you think about a Google site or a classroom web page, these are the things that parents need to know about. So they need to know about dates that are coming up, or they need to know the syllabus, or they might need to know the calendar of information of when things are due. So that's how we try to think about it. Moodle is your classroom, even though it's online, and not everything is public to everybody. But Google Sites, if you do have a classroom web page, then that's the place that the parents can see everything. For you guys, class Google Sites might be more of a student tool, or for you as a teacher, a place for projects, versus having a classroom website, because that's my that that's Edline and what that is serving its purpose for you. Okay? Yes? Do, do the parents have a separate login than their student, or do they have to log in as the student? With, with Google Sites, mm -hmm. you can set the privacy settings to be whatever you want. So with your ePortfolio, if you are going to be putting a lot of sensitive information on there, you could just share that Google site with the parent. Or what we do with our, like, the state research websites, we make them viewable for the entire world. So you really can set the sharing settings so that parents don't have to log in. We do not give parent accounts in Edina schools for Moodle or Google. So they have to log in with their student if they want to see any of that information. Okay? 
Um, okay, so when you guys, you guys have logged in and, and you have Drive up, um, which looks a bit like this, and you have a black toolbar that's up across the top, and these are all your different apps. So right now you've probably defaulted to Drive, but right next to it there should be a little Sites button, and so I'm going to ask you to click on Sites because that's where it lives. For students, you're doing the exact same thing that the students see. Okay, so this is exactly how I would be teaching the fourth graders if they came in as well. Now, most of you have probably not created a site, so mine looks a little bit different because I have a list of all these sites that I've created. So with sites, you don't have a limit as to how many you can create, which is fantastic. But we both have this red Create button, which is on the left-hand side. So we're going to click on the Create button. And today you're just playing. Okay, so we're not doing anything that, that has to be saved for later. You're really just, we're going to call it a sandbox site. So this is the space that you get to um, when you're going to create a site. Let me explain the difference between these two things right here. Today we're going to start with blank template because the blank template is really the place that you get to learn the most about Google Sites. But, for example, in Edina schools, each of my classroom teachers, their websites need to look exactly the same. They need to have the Edina colors, they need to have the same links, or if you are thinking about doing this for an ePortfolio for an entire school, some of the, there might be a template that you use that you want every student to have the same links and the same colors and all these kinds of things. So the gallery, I'm going to click on and I'm going to show you what that looks like. There are templates that are already created in here, okay? So here's our Valley View Middle School template. And here's our um, Edina Secondary Classroom. So if you're a secondary teacher, this is the, your template that you use. Here's the Edina Classroom template for, um, for elementary teachers. So there are templates that we've created within our own Edina apps. That's what we call it in Edina Schools is Edina Apps, not Google Apps. But there are also public ones that other people have made that you could choose from. So I could go into schools and education and somebody at Google has created one called Classroom Site that you could start with and then just change all the information. Okay, I'm going to tell you that I 99.999% of the time always start with a blank template. Okay, But if there, is, if there is a template that somebody else has created for you, then you would go in and use the, the gallery for doing that. Any single person could add a template to the gallery. So you could create the Valley View Middle School one and add it to the template gallery, and then any student could make a copy of it. Okay, so you have that ability. The next thing that we're going to so we're going to start with the blank template, and the next thing that you're going to do is naming your site. The direction that I give to the students is this. Nobody, nobody in Chaska Schools can have the exact same name for their website. So if I put... Chaska Sandbox 2013, mm -hmm. nobody else could have the same thing, Chaska Sandbox 2013. I could do Molly Chaska Sandbox 2013, but if there's another Molly in the group, they would have to do Molly S, or they would have to do Molly A, whatever their name is. So we're just going to create sandbox sites right now, something for you to play. So that is what I'm going to call mine, Molly Sandbox 2013. Usually adding the date at the end is really good and maybe even your initial so that we know that nobody else in the in the, the room is going to have this. If you do end up with a name that somebody's already taken, I'll show you where it ends up, but um, you just have to you'll just have to choose your name. You can see that it creates the URL for you. sites.google.com slash a slash isd 112.org and then the name. Okay, so it's a long name. Don't worry about it. You'll just link it somewhere so that somebody finds it. Underneath are two things. There's select a theme and more options. So let's click on the little arrow next to select a theme. And then you scroll down and these are all the colors that you could start with in order to make your site. If you're working with second graders, everybody's going to have glitter. <laughs> just guaranteed. Yeah, because it'll help you clarify that this was just a practice site that you were making. Um, so scroll down and find a theme that you like. And when you click on the theme, it'll turn a little red color and then scroll to the very bottom. I always tell people, too, that the theme that you choose when you make your website, it may not look exactly as you expected. 
and this is really good for second graders too because tears have happened. And at any time, you can change the theme. So it's not like one decision and you're done. You can always change it if you don't like the way that it looks when you, when you get to it. Okay? So choose a theme and then scroll down. And at the very bottom, sort of hidden now, is a little more options button. There's a little guy there. And if you click on it and scroll down, there are two things here. Now, if you're going to be making websites with students, the site categories becomes extremely helpful. Because if you have every student in your class type your last name and the date, so I would have all of you type in Schrader 2013, space or no space, you have to decide. Every student has to type the exact same thing. But what it does is it tags all of the websites for your class into one area so that I can quickly go in and see who um, I can go in and, and access your websites very quickly. So using site categories is not mandatory, but it is helpful if you are doing it as a class that they could all put that um, underneath. Site description, you don't need it all. So now, everybody up on the very top has a red create button. And if you click create and wait for just a little bit, up on the very top, okay, see where this is saying creating your site? If the message up there says somebody else already has this location, then you'll have to change the name of your site. I'm going to just walk around and see. The security warning, you can just say okay. Encrypted page Okay. I think with okay if it's a cryptic page. Yeah. It's very cryptic what we're making today. This is where you get the envelope oh, cool when you're doing it with kids, right? Because they have a website. Yes. You don't have to for today. No. But you can put your last name in there if you want to. Did you use the template? Okay. Have you done it before? Okay. So you'll probably, it'll be really different experience today. You can sit here and play with it. I'm fine with that. But it's going to be different than the way that I'm sharing up there. So do you want to follow along or just sort of cut and play? Okay. Do you want to make another one? Do you want to make another one? And you can have both follow along. Right. Ready? So this location is already the that's right. Like, um, everybody else get it? That's right. <laughs> but, <whatever. laughs> awesome. Inevitably, that's going to happen with your students, too, that that name is already um, taken, and so you'll have to help them do that. Now, let me just give you a little tour of your website here. Top right-hand corner, you've got these buttons, okay? Pencil is edit, plus sign is create a new page, more is more, we'll get there eventually maybe, and then the button up here is the share button. Now be, by default, the sharing settings is that everybody in your district can find and edit your site, students included. So that's the first thing that we always do with the students is we go click on that little share button up in the top corner. And we change the sharing settings. So the sharing settings say right here that people at Edina Apps can find and edit my page. I do not want that, right? So I'm going to click on the blue button that says change. Maybe yours defaulted to a little something different. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So it just defaults to this. So here are all the different sharing settings. I can make it private, which means nobody except for me can get onto the site. I can make it so that people within my district if they have the link, can see it. I can make it so that anybody who has an Edina account can see it, whether they have the link or not, they could search for it. Anyone with the link, which means that it's available if I emailed it out to 150 people or if I put it on Facebook, anybody who clicked on it could see it, but it's not going to be searchable. Nobody's going to be able to find it by searching or public on the web. 99% of the time we put it public on the web, unless there's a different purpose for it. Okay, And then we click the green button, save at the bottom. When you're in this kind of background, this is the back end of Google Sites, the way you get back to see what you want to work on and how you get to it is the name of your website underneath the red Manage Site button. So we click on your, the name of your site over here on the left-hand side underneath the red Manage Site button. Can you change the visibility? 
Always. always. Yep, you can always change the visibility. Um, so you could have it pu you could have it private until you're all finished working on it and then make it public. You could go and say, oh gosh, there's something wrong with this. I need to instantaneously take it down. And so you could go change the privacy settings. And if somebody clicked on it tomorrow or you know, right after you did that, then it's, pub it's private. So it's instantaneous. Um, so now you can see we have a globe here instead of the, the little business um, building. On the left-hand side, underneath, um, we put our Edina Schools logo up here. Um, you can do that if you want to. It's just part of something that we did. This is your navigation. And by default, it's navigated. there's navigation on the left-hand side. And when we create pages, it will be um, in alphabetical order. So the first thing we're going to do is just learn how to change the site a little bit. So let's click on the pencil. And when you click on the pencil, it loads the editor. It should look very similar to Google Docs and the fact that we have you know, bold and italics, and then you can change the text color or the background of the text color um, and stuff like that. So why don't you just do a little welcome to my web page. Thanks for coming and looking and seeing what I'm doing. I always do that. Try to change the font. Try to make it bigger or smaller. Is it in? It's um. So inserting is interesting. You can embed or attach on Google Sites. So you can attach anything to the bottom. With PDFs, you can't embed them though. So we could link to them or we could attach them. Yeah, I'll show you. Okay, so a little bit of um, organization here on this one. First of all, um, you know, hopefully you got to change your colors and you know things like that. Kind of easy to do that. Google Sites is not as friendly as Microsoft Word in the fact that when you start inserting images and things, you can't like drag and drop and make things bigger and smaller and cuter. It's, you have to play with what you've got. But one of my favorite features of kind of helping you to organize the way a Google site looks is this layout button. So the layout allows you to have a couple different ways, a, a couple different boxes to organize. So if you do two column, I could put the text on one side and then I could have some space to do an image on the other side. Okay, so the layout helps you organize some of the different ways that it looks. So on the other side, I'm going to click with my cursor in the box that I have now on this side. And I want to show you the insert button. So it's right under the word home, up in the top left. The insert button shows you all the different things that Google Docs, or that, that Google integrates within Google Sites. So you can put it, you can insert an image, you can insert a horizontal line, you could insert, um, you know, a chart, a document, a slideshow, lots of different things. You can insert videos from YouTube um, or from your Google Drive. So lots of different things that you could do. If you have um, a, a picture on your computer, you can go to insert image and you can just search for the file. Okay, and that's probably the place what most people are going to be doing. So we'll just, oh, I have, this is my computer that I don't use as often either. So just click this one. Okay, so when I click on the picture, you can see that the picture becomes gigantic. It doesn't really fit into the space that I need it to. Now, what we're used to doing is grabbing the corners and dragging and dropping. That's not the case with Google Sites, but you can see that when I click on the picture, I get these little settings right here. So I can left, center, or right align. I can make it small, medium, or large, okay? Or I can do the wrapping or unwrapping. So you don't get as many options as you do, but it does help you organize and put the image in there, you know, um, with a little bit more organization, okay? Most of you I see are trying to insert pictures, which is great. Yeah. 
little bit how. <laughs> Okay, on this page, I'm going to also show you how you can insert a YouTube video, okay? So let's say that underneath here we had made this video or I saw this really great video that I think the students should watch, okay? I'm going to try and insert a video here. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new tab, and up in, my, in Firefox it looks just a little bit different, but um, it should be the same. I'm going to open a new tab, and I'm going to go to YouTube.com. So you might want to try this too. So on YouTube, I'm going to search for a really fantastic video. Let's see here. I'll go to my channel. Oh, it's not signed in for me. And we'll find a video, maybe one of the TED Ed videos. Do you guys do the TED Ed? So let's do questions that nobody knows the answer to. Good. Now, when you get to the place on YouTube that's showing the video, okay, you can just grab the link that's up in the top to the video. You would, and when I mean grab, you need to copy it. Okay. So Control C or right click and copy. Okay, and then I go back to my sandbox site. So find a video and grab the link to the YouTube video that you want to put on your website. I just search for TED Ed videos. Okay, you just copy the link of when the video is showing on YouTube. One of the tabs across the top of your screen should be your website. It's this little icon. Probably has your name on it. Okay. Same little button here. We're going to go to the insert button. And I'm going to go to the bottom right hand corner video and choose YouTube. So insert video from YouTube. There's a little wizard that comes up, says tell me the URL. I paste it there. I actually always uncheck these two. Click save. And I wanted to show you this because it looks like it kind of didn't work after I put it in there. So when I go to insert video from YouTube, it looks like it didn't work. This is the editing side of Google Sites. So once you click on save up in the top corner, which we haven't done yet, but once you click on the blue word save, you'll see that that little gadget or that little YouTube video now shows up as the video. Okay? So it's a great way to send kids to your website to watch movies or videos as opposed to sending them to YouTube. At the end of this video, you will still have related videos, unfortunately. Okay? If you take a movie, if your kids make a movie with Photo Story, if you make a flip camera movie, you could, instead of putting it on YouTube, you can just put it into Google Drive because you can import video into your Google Sites from Google Drive without having all those related videos and things. So that might be kind of the next step, and you're like, Molly, what did you just say? Don't worry about it. We'll do it next time, okay? Um, so anyways, this is kind of fun that you can, you, now you've learned how you can do um, videos and pictures. One more thing on this page, and then we're going to move on to another page. So let's click on the pencil button again, edit, okay? Now your picture that you put on your website is about something, right? So it's maybe penguins, I see a lot of penguins, or I see, you know, I have my little nephew up here. Some people are field trip pictures or whatever. Underneath your picture, I want you to type, learn more about penguins, or I'll say, learn more about Santa Barbara. Okay, so somewhere that they could click, we're gonna make a link 
to a website. So I just put a little, I just typed a little information about that picture that I had put on the web, or on my website. I'm going to go to a new tab. I can get rid of the YouTube one if I don't want that anymore. Do a little tab management so you don't get 17,000 tabs. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to go to a website about Santa Barbara. Okay, so I'm going to just find, visit Santa Barbara. I'm just going to Google it and I'm going to just see. Santa Barbara tourism, vacations, hotel, restaurants. I'll just do the Wikipedia article. Now what I want is I want these words, learn more about Santa Barbara, to link to that website. Okay? So same as YouTube, all we need is the URL. All we need is this little URL up here, so I'm going to copy that. Control-C is a shortcut on your computer or on your keyboard if you um, haven't been using that. And then I'm going to go back to my website, the one that says my name up on it. Now watch carefully because this is a little hiccup that some people that, that can, you can get easily confused by this. Okay, So I want these words to link to this Wikipedia website. So I'm going to highlight the words. And just keep watching for a second, and then I'll let you do it. And then I'm going to use this little link button, okay, the little chain link. But when I click on the chain link, there's three options, okay? I can link to another site's page, so like another Google site page on my website. Or I can link to an external web address. So that's the step that some people miss. And then I can paste the address in there. I could say whether I wanted to open a new, new window or not, which I usually do if it is an external link, and then I click OK. Once I click Save, it will be linked to learn more about Santa Barbara. So again, you can do this now. You copy the link. The next thing you do is highlight the words. Click on the little chain link and make sure you click on web address. And then you can paste it. And click OK and save. Yeah, but still, that's but not yeah. solving the issue. Right. Yeah. 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 Do you know how to fix this? Um, oh, wow. Yeah. 
You can just drag and drop it. It overlapped. Like, oh, so you would just have to make it smaller. The picture. But I did. So like if I, because hers is a small picture, and then it was, and she saves it overlaps. Yeah. So it's actually it gets a little technical, but you can get rid of um, the stuff. What I would do is I get rid of the left side of the bar because you can't have you can't change the size of the video. The video is what it is unless you go into the HTML of it. Um, so I get rid of the sidebar, or I just do one column. Okay. So yeah. It's a, it's a layout issue. It's so a layout issue. Go up and mm -hmm. set, change layout yep, it is. Yep. <laughs> okay, you guys. Um, we're gonna create a new page, real quick, and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show you just a few examples of a few sites. So let's come on back together. Up in the top right hand corner. You should have a pencil, a new page, and more. If you have the blue save button, make sure you click save before we move on. Okay, so you should have the pencil and the new page button. Okay, so we are going to click on new page and we're going to create a new page for our website. So make sure you click save before you do the new page because you won't see it. So we're going to click on new page. In, uh, by default, Google Sites is going to organize our pages in alphabetical order. Okay, so that's just fine for right now, especially when you're doing it with students. So we're going to do, um, let's do a calendar. So we'll type the word calendar. We're just naming our page. And now these are the different types of pages that you can have. Okay, 90% of the time I use web page. That's the kind of page that you were just editing. Okay, it had the blank spot. You could put pictures, videos, whatever you wanted onto it. Announcements page I'll show you, but an announcements page kind of acts like a blog in the fact that you have information on top of information and the, the old information slides down. So in Edina, we use it for our homework updates, or some people are using it for like YouTube homework or flipping their classroom and things. The file cabinet is a good page if you have a lot of attachments or documents that you want to get to parents that you want to attach. A list page, skip it, learn about it later if you want to. I never use it. And start page, same thing. Okay? So we're going to keep this calendar as web page. The bottom part is very poorly worded, but let me just tell you this. Keep it at the top level. Okay? It makes you think that you want to put it underneath the word home, like location-wise, but that's not the case. When it says put page under home, it actually means as a sub page of home. If you keep it at the top level, it will do as you expect. Put the word calendar underneath the word home. Okay, so just don't change it until you start learning about sub pages. Then you can start playing with that. Okay, top red create button. We didn't do anything except for type the word calendar. And then I talked for a long time. Now, what happens is it creates the calendar page for you and it opens it up in the edit mode. It also took you to the, if you look on the left hand side of your navigation, you'll see that there's navigation at the calendar page over there. It will be in alphabetical order underneath the word home. Okay, so home is always on top. Now, are you using Google Calendar? Okay, so that could be a whole nother session we do some other time. Our teachers use Outlook as our internal calendar and Google Calendar as our <laughs> external calendar. So they have calendars. <laughs> that they put on their websites or in Moodle for the parents to see. If you are using Google Calendar, you have to make the calendar public so that when people get there they can see the events. But what's really fun is that we can go to Insert Calendar. Okay, this will work for you too because you do have a Google Calendar associated with you. So if you go to Insert and Calendar, did you lose? Are you starting over? <laughs> Yeah. 
Right, correct. Yeah, until you like say well, you can change it in one second. Yeah, you don't get it in the edit mode. You can't see it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Like, can we do that one-on-one right when we're done? Okay, great. A couple of questions that have come up. Some people have said, oh, I actually kind of like what I'm working on. Can I change the name so that it doesn't say sandbox? Yep, we can do that. Um, Watch what happens when I click on calendar, okay? All of our schools use Google Calendar, so I could, cho I could choose, oh, I want to put on the Creek Valley public calendar, or I want to put on the high school calendar. So I click on the calendar that I want. I click select. I never do the name of the calendar. It's just something I do. And then click save. So now when I click up in the save box up in the top right-hand corner, once that calendar is on there, you can see all of the events that are on here. Now a little note, if this calendar is not public on the calendar app, then when parents get here it will say, we're sorry, you do not have permission to see any of the events that are on this calendar. So if you are doing this and parents are having a problem, it's in the calendar app because this is just a picture of my Google Calendar. Okay, so I don't add anything on this Google Calendar the web to if I need to add an event, I have to go to Google Calendar to add it. But it will be automatically updated and live on the website. Okay? So you only update it one place, and then wherever that calendar is linked or viewable, then it, it gets automatically updated. So we're building a, a template using the calendar for them to um, like add their assignments and add upcoming stuff. We insert the Google Calendar and then they um, edit you, what it. What I would do is I would just have a page for a calendar with directions on it for them. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to put a calendar on there because they don't want that calendar, they want their own calendar. Right, yes. right. Yes. So I would just, on the template, I would just say, in this on this page, go to insert calendar, choose your calendar, but make sure that that calendar is also public uh, in their Google Calendar app. Okay. And yep. that's and that and they would have to set up that Google Calendar Correct. before they put it in. Yep, they would have to set that up. Yep. So calendar is an option. Let's create one more page together. So we're gonna go up and we're gonna click on the little plus sign again. So you have to make sure you've clicked save. We're gonna create a new page, and I'm gonna call this homework updates or classroom updates. Whatever you want, but you need to change this page to announcements. So the template that we're going to use is the announcements page. So we've added a new page, clicked on the plus sign. Clicking on the plus sign, doing a homework or classroom updates and changing the page template to announcements. Now this page, this page is going to be like a blog, so it's going to look a little bit different. Okay, so once I click on announcements and then I click on create, the red button up at the top, create, you're going to see it looks a little bit different in the fact that it created the page, it put a link on the navigation on the left hand side, but now I have this little guy called new post. So every day that there's new homework, I'm going to click on new post. So we'll do that for today, so click on new post. New post actually creates a new page underneath or as a sub page of homework updates. Okay? So today's, well, let's do tomorrow. Tuesday, January 22nd, 2013. Um, math, study link, 3.4, read, 20 minutes. <coughs> Social studies, watch the video below. Now, this page is exactly like all the other pages. So I could get a YouTube video. Um, I'm just a bill.
insert video from YouTube. And now click on the blue button, save. Now, this new post for every day that you have homework acts just like any page on your website. So you can embed video, you can insert links, you can do whatever you want to on it. So it's a very interactive planner. It's a digital planner is really what it is. And so a lot of teachers are like, oh, I have to do my whiteboard homework, and I have to go back and I have to remember to update my web page. No, bring your web page up, edit it in real time in front of the kids instead of doing the whiteboard, and then you'll never forget to do it. Um, but you can see here that now, homework updates, there is this little black arrow that, you know, right there. <laughs> Um, but what it is is that now, Tuesday, January 20, 22nd, is a subpage of homework updates. You see how the subpage works, okay? And there's a cookie crumb trail. So now, this is the main page, and then this page is a subpage of this page. So there is, that, that shows you a little bit about how those subpages work. So, let's say it's Tuesday night, and now it's time to do our homework that we need to do and tell the kids what's due for Wednesday. What you would do is let's click on the homework updates page here. So this is the, the parent page, or the, you know, the one above. And now I get this new post button again. Okay, so I just clicked on this homework updates page because Tuesday, January 22nd is its own page now too. And so then now I can do new post and it will create a new page. I will retitle it Wednesday. January 23rd. Um, and then I click save. Now watch what happens here. I'll just show you what. started this page, what was the, the name? Announcements. Announcements. It's an announcements page template. Sorry, I'm being okay. I'm sorry, room over there. I'm Thank neglecting you. you. They're probably fine. Um, <laughs> so, so here we have this. But over here, this subpage system is going to start looking very bad. There is this little black arrow that I can close those subpages up so that you don't see all those things. You could teach your kids to do that, that's fine. Right? Just close it up and then you'll be able to see all the other links um, on the side. But there is a way that we can get rid of that too, and we could just say, don't show the subpage navigation. Right now, the way that it's set up is it shows it. So it's in that more button. And if we go into more. And I think we can go to edit site layout now, actually. That's a new thing. Um, yeah, let's go into edit site layout. And now this little box appears across the top. Lots of different options. Remember how I said you can really get customizing with this? But if we just click on this little, um, our sidebar over here, okay, if we click on the black word navigation, so you have to click on edit site layout. Let me show one more time. More, edit site layout. It's about halfway down, more towards the bottom. And then when the black, the sidebar turns black over here and you just click on it, and then you get this guy. Did you get that? If you just click on the word navigation, you get this guy. Now this guy says show the levels, to pay, the levels of pages to show, just change it to one. And then click OK. Mom, is there a way once you put them in to 
change the order? Yes. Um, is it, are those different pages or are they um, announcements? They're different types of pages. Okay. So yes, if you click on sidebar, but you're, you're making a big decision here because right now it's automatically making links for you on the side. If you take it off and reorganize, each time you make a new page, you have to link it. You have to go back to the sidebar and tell it where to go. If I put a number in front of the... It should work. It should work. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take you... I'm just going to give you um, a quick little tour, okay? First of all, um, I'm just going to show you what a classroom web page looks like, one of our Edina ones. Let's see if this is her correct year. Yeah. So this is an example of what one of our classroom websites looks like um, at Edina School. So she's got a couple organizational <laughs> things over here that we haven't really gotten to. But um, she's got, here are her parent sites. She's got sign-up forms, her schedule, newsletters, parent links, testing information, her calendar, and a wish list. And then she has her student site. So she has student links. Um, she has Chromebooks in her classroom. Here's her homework page that you guys were just seeing, or that you guys were just making right now as well. Okay, so she's got Friday, January 25th was the finish the verb packet. You can see that since we aren't editors, we don't have that new post page. This is what the kids see. So these are all the different, you know, Wednesday, Friday. So these are all of her homework assignments. And if the parent subscribes to the post, they'll get the email? Sort of, yeah. They have to have an RSS feeder so that you can't subscribe by email, which would be amazing. Um, she's got a little place where every morning, so she uses an announcements page too for morning work. So every morning she goes in and she makes a post as to what they're supposed to do. So it's a good little running record of all the different things that they're supposed to do um, when they get to school in the morning, um, book recommendations, their calendar, and then she's got all of her class projects. So she makes, instead of, well, uh, each of her students have portfolios too, but these are links to all of the different projects that she does um, within her class. I'm going to show you one of her kids' portfolios. So she has each student make a Google site as a class, as a, as a portfolio. So we'll just click on Nicholas's here. And then she links them off of her page. I hope we have access to them. Okay. So here, <laughs> he's obviously changed his background to be very, very googly here. So he's got, uh, this is the way that they set theirs up, is they've got um, the different um, subjects that they have on the side. And then when I click on writing, he makes links, okay, to the work that he's been doing, okay? And so these are all the Google Docs that he's had, um, that he's done within writing. And then he's got free writing. Let's see what he did for social studies. Nothing linked on social studies yet. So science, these are two projects that he's done that he just made links to the different pr projects that they've done. So the way that they set this up is by subject level, and then the kids start adding and adding and adding to the things as they go on throughout the year. So that's an example of one of our classroom web pages. Yes, question in the front. Um, do they also have user folders that, they, that are housed? Like, is there, is there they do, yep. Yeah, they each have um, an H drive or something like that. This class in particular doesn't really use it because they really use the Google Docs for all their writing and things because... They can access it from at home and at school and wherever they're at. So they do a lot of their writing and creating in Google Docs. <coughs> yes? Are these classrooms, is this one-to-one -one computers to kids? Or are they just Not all. We only have, we have one elementary classroom that's one-to-one, -one, like one of them. Um, but most of them are doing labs. But we do have a lot of Chromebooks that are floating around at the elementary level. And then at the middle school level, we have a cup. We have one ninth grade room that's one to one. Please excuse the interruption. Uh, they are testing the fire alarm, so please disregard the fire alarm. <laughs> but at least we don't have to go outside at 30 below. Perfect timing. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is um, another example of a way that you could use Google Sites. So this is called Spacepedia. This is my business. This is my my friend Ben. And he used to teach earth science. And so what he did is he made a Google site 
that was meant to be sort of like Wikipedia, but he called it Spacepedia. So if you were my students and we were in our science doing Spacepedia, I would have created this website as the teacher, and I would have, would have gone in and shared this website with editing rights with all of you. And I know your email address is because you're, you're my students. So now every single student in our class can edit that website. And I would number you off, one, two, three, four, five, three, however, however many you are, and I would say, that's your page. That's the page that you need to edit and change. And so I would assign you black holes or Jupiter or, you know, something <coughs> like solar flares. And you would go in and make your one page of the website. And at the end, we have an entire class project called Spacepedia that was a collaboration between all of us in one place. So you can think of Google Sites as group projects. A lot of my teachers do this for like book, and out, book awards, um, or they, you know, the students have to pick their favorite book that they've read in the last four months, and they each create a page. And what a great place for book recommendations um, for students to put on there as well. Yes? Is there a quick way to get back your navigation gadget if you accidentally deleted it? And I can't find a way to get my navigation sidebar. Um, if you go to the More and Edit Navigation, Click on the left hand side so sidebar is clicked. More. Yep, over, you just need. No. Edit, edit site layout? Or? Edit site layout, yep. And then just make sure that sidebar is clicked. Oh, no. No, actually, I actually clicked on that. You just said remove. Oh, click on the edit of this. Yep. <laughs> okay, we have to go in a different way. So I'll help you in just a sec, okay? Before we move on to the next page. What was <laughs> this is, no, this was an example. So where I have this, so that you could see it, you know, or play with it as well, is I've created this web page for you, and I'm sure Nate and your other administrators will email this out to you as well, but it's under the Google Sites, because that the, that's the class you're in. And then what I have is underneath that presentation that I gave you, I have a gazillion and a half links for you to continue your learning base more than just today. And on the left hand side I have Google Sites examples. So like here's Mrs. Purdy's classroom that I just showed you. Um, down here is here's Spacepedia. Here's the state research project that I showed you. Here's the service learning projects that we did. Um, lots of different things. Um, I've got different events. So lots of resources for you on under that place. On the right hand side is helpful links like how do you do this or how do you do that so those are all links for you to have um, to learn more if you need to um, be reminded of some of the things that we've done okay um, so within your websites that we've just made the last thing that I do want to show you that I think is really really awesome is the fact that you can embed Google Docs how many of you have made or created a Google Doc before awesome okay Thinking about, let's think about your newsletter, okay? So your newsletter, let's say that you went away from Microsoft Word and you only started using Google Docs as the place for your newsletter, okay? There are some ways that you can embed into Google Sites instead of linking to them. So we're going to create one more page. We have five minutes and we're going to get it done. So we're going to create a new page and we're going to call it Newsletters and we're going to keep it as a web page. So you don't have to change the type of page that's made. Okay, and so we're just going to rename it and click create. Now, in my drive, which I'll just pop into right now, you don't have to. So in my drive, I'm going to create a new document real quick called January Newsletter. Okay, so this is going to be the document. You're not going to have this specifically, but you can play with one of the ones that you would. But I want to show you the process that I would go through. So in my new document, I'm going to rename it by clicking on Untitled Document. And I'll call it January Newsletter 2013. Oops. 1013. 2013. Okay, so dear parents, welcome back. I hope you had a great break. Okay. Now, 
this Google Doc that I've created up in the top right hand corner is private just to me. Anything you put on your website needs to be have needs to have the sharing settings appropriate so that people can see it. So I would click on share and I would make sure that my document is shared so I have to change the sharing settings to public on the web. Then people are going to be able to see it. So I have my um, my Google my Google uh, newsletter, my Google Doc newsletter. It says "Welcome back." Let's spell "welcome" correctly, okay? And it's there. Now I want to show you what that would look like if now I'm ready to put this newsletter onto my web page. So you're, here you are with newsletter in a blank spot. What you can do is go to Insert Document. And with insert document, it's going to look through your Google Docs or your Google Drive and say, oh, well, which document would you like to embed? You could also do presentations, spreadsheets, forms, videos this way as well. So here's my January 2013 doc. I click select. And now it gives me a little wizard. Okay, do you want to include the title? Do you want to include a border? Sure. Height, the maximum is 2,000 without the scroll bar. And I leave width just open, so it's 100%. And I'll click Save. Now, it's kind of that, that strange embed gadget. But once I click Save, okay, now that newsletter is embedded right onto my Google site. What's nice about this is if I go back and if I add something, to my Google Doc, which is the only place I have to update it. You know, test on January 30th, 2013. Okay, if I come back to my website and refresh, you'll see that it's automatically uploaded. So it's a live link that no matter what's on your Google Doc will always appear on your Google site. Okay, So it's a nice way of being able to keep up to date with some of the things. You could not have to finish it at this point. Let's see if this is... And you never have to go back and link it again. So this is what happens to me a lot of the time is I have a presentation that I'll give, and then I'll find like, oh, I need to update that slide, or this is better information. And so the link that you have is always the most current version of whatever I'm working on. So it's a nice way to be able to keep up to date with the docs and not have to keep sending different copies or revisions out to people time and time again. So um, you know, the the fact that you can embed all of those documents onto um, your site is is really a nice feature as well. Because I think that this one is not saving appropriately. So what happens if it's not updating? It will. I guarantee you it will, even if it's just not doing it instantaneously right now. It could be. Waiting for docs, waiting for this and that. You don't really have to save it, which is nice. But see how it's saying it's the last edit? I don't think it's currently saving it. So again, because it is 915, um, I just want to remind you that this, this website has lots of different resources. One of the things that I might point to you is that, I'm just trying to find it, hold on. I have... A webinar How did you share that? that I did. Oh, here it is. Under Google Sites Resources, I did a, an hour webinar on how to create a classroom website using Google Sites, which will go walk through all the things that I did just with you as well. So that's a good place to go to is the recorded webinar. On that, I also have lots of tips and tricks and lots of embedding things in how-to, 
But um, you know, just searching on Google, how to do this and that on Google Sites is, is a great way. So Would that webinar be something we could walk through with students? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. But I don't know. The students might need... I actually have other webinars for how to create Google Sites for students that might be more helpful. So I could add those to that list right there. Um, the very last thing that I need you to do is I do need you to go to this URL again, okay, which is this little guy, because below, let me just show you, is a post-session evaluation that I need you to do quickly before you move on. So go to this little red link and do that post-session evaluation, por favor. No, that's just a website that I've created. And is that something we can share? Oh, yeah, it's yours to keep. Yeah, for keeps. It's just, it'll be at this, and I can email it to you, too. If you go to posteducation.com, on the front page right now, it's Chat Scott, just because it's what we're doing today. So, but th this will always be there, and I'll make sure that you guys all have it. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can stop our little recording here, too.